Yep. Hey guys, two nutrition nuts here. <laughs> That's right. So today we're here filming the Jewel City Roller Girls. This is a fun alternative yeah, for totally fitness. Yeah, totally awesome. It is. And the girls, what have they told us about? A lot of neat stuff about their nutrition. Yeah, you're going to hear about um, a lot of individual cases. They're going to talk about their yep. uh, what's benefited, what they've benefited from uh, being part of their derby team. And yep. we have to tell you, this is just an awesome, awesome, awesome team. We uh, we've been uh, just super welcome. And we're we super have. excited just to be here and, you know, get a glimpse into their life and see what they're doing to inspire health in their community. Yeah. So. The girls are totally inspiring and you'll hear a lot of motivational talks when they get into their nutrition aspect and mm -hmm. you'll hear the interviews on that. And um, I have to say, I really applaud the Derby Girls mission statement. That was totally oh, yeah. awesome. So you'll hear that later. Yes. Um, but we just wanted to say hi and that we're here on location. Um, just kind of spreading health and trying to get their their viewpoint. We can't skate, but we're no. <laughs> we're <laughs> here having we're, a good time. But yeah, just know all of our footage was done on, on flat foot. foot. <laughs> Two nutrition nuts. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Well, we're the Jewel City Roller Girls. I'm Liz Vicious, one of the captains of the team, and I'm V Bomb, the other captain. The team has been in Huntington for about three years. This past February, they celebrated their birthday. Huntington's first flat track roller derby team. Our mission statement includes promoting the health of women and through exercise and sports play. And we also like to volunteer with various events throughout Huntington. We've done certain events such as Push for Alzheimer's and we've volunteered for other 5Ks as well as the Hot Dog Festival and the Huntington Music and Arts Festival. Um, and uh, then of course we also have our, our scrimmages and bells um, to have you know, the community come and watch. Um, so we have our practices and um, home events um, so that people can see us play. Um, so we get back to the community and go out and promote ourselves while helping and uh, then the community helps us by coming and seeing us play. For us, it's all about giving back to the community. We help the community that helps us grow. And v -Bomb just became um, captain this year. Um, she is a new captain for our, our team. Can you say anything about that? To me, being a captain means leading and being a positive image for my teammates. I chose her. Um, I think uh, V-Bomb is um, a fresh energy for our team and uh, being um, captain, I was able to choose my co-captain and uh, she's really stepped up and been a um, great leader for the team um, and given a really good energy to everyone. Uh, I've been in roller derby for quite some time now, so I kind of feel like an old dog at this point. But uh, <laughs> I know my stuff, but she's the one that keeps the, the energy alive and, and keeps it fun. Oh, hi, I'm Rat Race. <laughs> and I'm Sick Foley. <laughs> so what is some, some of your background information or you know how you ended up in derby? Okay, um, I grew up watching Roller Jam on TV when I was really little. It was the only sport I ever really kind of even cared about. Um, it was more of like a book nerd kind of thing. Um, about two months before I started roller derby, I became a vegetarian. Um, so finding a balance there and also creating this new athlete out of myself at the same time was an interesting adventure, but I, uh, I feel like I'm better for it. I was gonna say, what, so what aspect do you think of your life has benefited from joining uh, Derby? Oh gosh, um, it's actually really hard to like say one specific thing. I feel like um, just across the board, um, my life has improved. And but it really did. Um, it started with that central idea of health. And when I became a vegetarian, I understood that my diet would have to change. Um, but I had never been an athlete before, also. So understanding that I had to fuel my body for something more than I was already like used to um, was a really experimental process for me um, because all of bodies are different, like just across the board. Um, I felt like every practice for a while was an experiment. Did I get enough protein this time? Was it that I wasn't hydrated enough? Um, and so I did a lot of internet research and I did a lot of talking to different athletes and things like that. And I still feel like as I develop as an athlete, I'm still developing my diet. Um, because I'm either doing more or I've started cross training or I play more than I used to. And I have to really keep track of myself um, and continue to like be part of this learning process. 
and also accepting that it is a process, um, that it's going to constantly be evolving and to take a joy in that. That like if you have a down day, then that's just another challenge and there's something really amazing about that, that you're constantly improving. And how long have you been uh, derby? Um, February I'll make four years. Wow, okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, two months, so four years vegetarian, four years derby. Cool. So, yeah. Are you a full vegan or do you... Um, no, a vegetarian. Just a regular, okay. Um, yeah. Cool. So, I, uh, I like eggs <laughs> a lot. Huevos Rancheros <laughs> is yeah. like my go-to. There you go. And so, um, if you had one tip you think you could tell everyone that kind of translates to everyday lives or everyday people um, from derping, what do you think they could benefit from? Um, so, because my life improved across the board, not even just nutrition, from joining this community, um, whatever you do, if it's not derby, find something. Like, find something that makes you happy and keeps you active and makes you want to be a better person. It might not be derby, you should totally do derby. <laughs> but if you just keep looking for it and throw yourself into as many things as possible, if nothing else, you'll get to be like 60 and be like, oh yeah, I tried that. And you'll be better for it. Yeah. Alright, you want to tell us a little stealing, about yourself? Stealing all my answers I thought of. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, my story, I also I was never um, into sports in school. I was always the nerd. I was never the athlete. Um, but one thing, I struggled with weight my whole life. And in September of 2012, I started getting in shape. I was actually 344 pounds. And I lost all the weight. I've lost 187 pounds, give or take, since then um, through Weight Watchers and exercise, all natural. Um, so for me, I know some people have joined Derby and it's made them lose weight and get into shape. For me, it was more, okay, I've exercised to lose the weight, now I need a new goal to keep me going. So it's, okay, what can I do now to challenge myself? And then I happened to have uh, two mutual friends who had friends on the team and right within the same couple of days, they said, hey, you should try this, you'd like it. So I was like, okay, that's a sign, I have to do it. And I was always really backward my whole life, um, mostly probably because of the weight that held me back. And so I wanted to keep challenging myself and put myself in situations where I'm not comfortable because I never did that before. And I was like, okay, this is pretty new and uncharted for me, so I'm going to come out and I'm going to do it. Um, it was very scary walking in the door that first night, but exciting. And I've never left. I've been here ever since. <laughs> and so now my goals um, for healthy diet and exercise are not just to be healthy, but to improve my performance on the track. Um, you know, I think coming into Derby, I picked up some of the basic skills a little bit more quickly because I was already in shape, but now I'm looking at, okay, when I work out at home, what exercises will help me with doing crossovers or what will help me with being stronger in my legs so that I can be a better blocker, that sort of thing. So it's given me a new focus since the weight loss is kind of taking a back seat to okay, now I'm strong and healthy and do well for my team. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, and as far as diet, um, I still follow Weight Watchers, I love it, but basically it's all about portion control and, and moderation, um, not completely denying yourself anything, but you know, having those special treats, but I try to keep a good balance and um, have really tried to focus on protein more since joining Derby because it's more strenuous than even, I mean, I run long distance, but a practice is way more strenuous than one of my runs, so I want to make sure I'm not losing muscle mass and so I definitely want to up that protein. I try to do it as naturally as I can. I do have to throw in a supplement or a bar here and there just to make sure that I'm getting enough, but uh, fruits and veggies are my big. I'm like, I have no kids, but I'm like the mom. I always have apple slices in my purse um, because I'm, I eat all the time. <laughs> People don't believe how much I eat to have lost this much weight. I'm like, when you're working, you can eat when you get hungry, so. And do you have a tip for anyone outside of Derby? What's something that they could... Stole mine, so I'm just <laughs> mine. <laughs> um, my tip is always, use. I like to tell people to use me as an example because, you know, at 344 pounds, I would have, a lot of people think, well, I just can't, I'm stuck, I can't do it. Um, and I'm proof that you can. I started off doing walking at home videos and just worked up from there. I've never joined a gym. I don't belong to a gym. I work out at home and outside and here. Um, and that was a goal of mine too because when I first started Weight Watchers, I was unemployed. I could barely afford those fees, so I certainly couldn't afford a gym membership. So I was like, okay, I'm going to work out at home. I have these videos that you can get for five, ten bucks on Amazon. 
and that's how I started. And I was like, okay, this is going to be my goal to completely meet my weight loss goals without joining the gym. I'm not anti-gym, but that's a barrier for some people or an excuse. It's too expensive, it's intimidating, I don't have the time. And so I'm proof that you can work out at home and outdoors and then a sport like this and reach your goals just the same as hiring a trainer and working out at the gym. Okay. Um, I'm R2. Uh, I'm a college student. I'm in my final semester of a bachelor's in history. Um, I'm from like central West Virginia, middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, and I was never um, a like sport person before Derby. I'm not, um, I was very much a student. <laughs> I've been an academic forever. I've been a smart person, but I was never like a sport person before this. So I don't have like that kind of background. <laughs> I also go to Marshall. Um, I am starting in my first year of my master's degree in communication disorders. And um, I have always been an athlete um, since I was little. Um, and Derby kind of filled that competitive niche that I was seeking. And uh, I've been playing for three years. It's been awesome and it's kind of actually propelled my interest in fitness and um, actually got me, has been the catalyst of um, getting me into powerlifting too. So um, that's awesome. That's a new passion that I have now. And uh, yeah. So what aspect do you think of your life that has benefited from joining Derby or many aspects? Or anything? Um, when it comes to nutrition, um, thinking about Derby and being an athlete, a powerlifter, whatever, um, my relationship of, has, with food has changed a little bit. Um, instead of it being, it was never an enemy for me, but something that I felt like I had to watch kind of. Now it's something that is a fuel for you know, for me to be able to do these things, to be able to function. So, um, some staples in my diet, I eat all the time. I eat every three hours, I'd say. Um, I eat a lot more than I look to. And, uh, yeah, I try to get in fruits and vegetables, more vegetables, but, uh, and definitely protein. I try to get a lot of high protein diet in there. Um, before, since before I came to Derby, I wasn't sporty at all. <laughs> um, if for me, it's been a huge shift because I almost thought of my body as just a thing that housed my brain that got me around. <laughs> I didn't care about it at all. Um, I wasn't careful about what I ate. I didn't do much. Um, now I skate on two leagues, so I have four practices a week. I do lifting uh, in order to cross train uh, and pick up like bouts and games anytime I can. <laughs> so that's a lot of activity to build up to. Uh, I've been skating for like almost four years now. Um, so now <laughs> a lot has changed for me. Um, and my relationship with food right now is just trying to get enough of it because like I never ate a lot. Um, I don't naturally eat a whole lot. I've always been really small. So now like trying to build muscle and get stronger and do more, I have to like just try to get more calories. <laughs> um, so you would say nutrition is a vital part too? Yeah, it just, yeah, for me nutrition is just like trying to get enough fuel in my body and learning what that means that like if I eat sweets, then I'll like, for me, I'll feel full and not be able to get in healthy calories that will actually fuel me. So like learning what that looks like for me and what that the results are. <laughs> Uh, let's see. If you have one tip for those outside of Derby that could better, you know, think that anyone could benefit from, uh, maybe that Derby has taught you, what do you think that would be? I think just being active, just getting out, doing something, whether it be commuting on your bike to school or work or, you know, walking, taking a jog to do an errand. I think a lot of people don't take advantage of other ways of communicate, communication, not communication, but com commuting, um, that you can get exercise in at the same time. Um, my favorite advice for Derby and life is to do stuff that you're terrible at. <laughs> Just seek out anything you're bad at and try it, <laughs> give it a go. Um, for me, that means like starting weightlifting when I was always really small and skinny um, and starting doing like big hits and things in Derby because that's not my strength, so I wanted to learn it. Um, that, that can also mean anything in your life. Uh, just try a new thing, because people will say things like, well, I'm, I'm really bad at running, I'm really bad at biking. That's fine, that's great. <laughs> that means you've got so much you can learn. That's an awesome opportunity in your life. 
Wonderful. Okay, my name is uh, Wes Tickles. Um, that's my derby name. <laughs> my real name is Wes Clements. Um, so what we're doing here is we're doing what's called a scrimmage. What that is is basically a simulated game. Now in derby, a game is actually called a bout. So I'm going to call it a simulated bout. And one of the reasons we do these is because it's one of the best ways to practice an actual bout. Um, so we're trying to get a lot of experience for our newer skaters and also our vets. It's a good way for them to get together and practice. today and take a look at what Brad Fuller is going to take his class through in his um, Sunday lifting class. So it should be some good footage, some good um, instructional workout information that everybody can see and I think there's going to be some interesting fun moves, don't oh, yeah, you? Oh yeah, we're um, actually right now over at Harris Riverfront Park doing a little planning, enjoying the sunshine and then we're going to head over there and 
see what he has to offer and yeah. so it should, check everything out. It should be a good time. So we just wanted to be able to showcase to everyone what um, CrossFit Thunder does offer to the community. Um, it's a very motivating, welcoming atmosphere, and I hope that everyone will be able to um, see that through our video and especially um, through our interview with Coach Brad Fuller. So yeah, we just wanted to like uh, find any ways yeah. to help promote them. Uh, or promote any place in general that offers health like that. So it's a pretty cool place. It is. CrossFit Thunder is awesome. Um, I enjoy it myself. So we just wanted to share that with everyone. And um, you guys take a look, tell us what you think, and we'd be glad to go back and film more there. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. We're two Nutrition Nuts, and we're here at CrossFit Thunder today. And we're going to get ready to go inside and talk to Brad Fuller and take a look at some of the fun activities they're doing. Yeah, so let's go on in and see what's going on. Been doing this for two and a half years. Um, started here with uh, Coach Zach Wilson. We came, did the free trial for the week. Uh, really loved it. Um, wanted to learn more about it. Did about three or four months. Decided we wanted to uh, do more with it than just participate. We got our level one, and uh, been coaching ever since. And I haven't looked back. Well, I think what CrossFit Center does um, is we have a wide range of people here. Uh, we've got you know people who. Uh, just graduated high school, still in high school. You know, people who've uh, who've already retired. Um, we've got you know from 18, you know, to 60. People who've worked out their whole life. People who haven't. And what I think is nice about that is those people reach out, and we've got different avenues of people to, to reach out to. We have different, uh, you know, doctors, lawyers. Like I said, just different groups of people. And then when we all come together. This place is very motivating, um, supportive. More importantly, I think a lot of people they're they're intimidated by us. They see us on Facebook. They see pictures. They watch the CrossFit Games, they think they can't come here and do that stuff, and and, I, and it is intimidating. It's intimidating for someone like myself who's been working out my whole life to step into this place. But once you get here and you see the people and you see how uh, how well the coaches are, are you know educated and, and how they work with you, you feel right at home almost immediately. And um, and I think that's the biggest part. Because once you do that and you realize you can do it, and you've got a support system here, then you go out as a member and you go reach out and you tell your friends, you tell your family, and then we just grow and it becomes a very big family. Okay, on, on Sundays at 3 o'clock, we've been doing this for a little over two years now. We have a, what's called a competition class. And uh, uh, what we do here, it's a little bit longer than normal classes. The average class here at CrossFit is an hour long. Here we run about 90 minutes. Um, it's usually a, a, a three-part type workout. And what we do is we go a little heavier than general for the people who like to lift weights and, and go a little heavier than we do during the week. But also if there's a competition co coming up, because that's part of the CrossFit, you know, we want to get everyone um, you know, in shape for life, get ready for life. But there's people who like the, the competition aspect of it. So if something's coming up, whether it be a beginner's competition, whether it be the Reebok Open, we try to start programming the Sunday class and, and let people practice those movements, get uh, comfortable with those movements, and try to give them a push for that. And we've done that Sunday. We've had a group uh, that usually averages anywhere between 12 to 24 people. And uh, we, we've been having a lot of fun. It's a lot of people look forward to this Sunday to kind of almost start the week off. Uh -huh. 